This fall in San Jose, the Rotary Club convened a summit on greener power and transportation. Hello, Rotarians. I'm honored to join you for this environmental summit. Allow me to give a big thank you to Rotary International Foundation for making combating climate change a priority. Our strong climate policies are not job killers, they are job creators. Longtime public transportation advocate Rod Diridon Sr. led the proceedings. And now let's uh, get into a, a final uh, stretch run. And, uh, have... Attendees in person and online considered transportation and climate change. We've got state funding, and we've also got action focusing on green transportation, the shift to public transit first as a model for urban development and for building out our transportation infrastructure. We've got technology wins on the EV cars. Not only are they getting better, but we also have many more manufacturers coming into the marketplace and offering a wider range of models. Before leaving on field trips, summit goers had EVs to check out. But alternative transportation takes many forms today. On the peninsula, taking the train has always been an option. For over 150 years, passengers have ridden along the peninsula rail corridor, a route that has changed very little in all that time. But one big change is happening now, electrification of the line. Caltrain is a century old commuter railway here on the peninsula, originally run by Southern Pacific. And when SP wanted to get out of the commuter rail service, a small group of visionaries led by Ron Gerardon and others came together to save commuter railway here. On a field trip for the Rotary Green Summit, lifelong transportation activist Rod Diridon brings colleagues for a tour of the San Jose Transit Hub named in his honor to get an update on Caltrain modernization. What we're really here to see and I'm anxious to see too, is the electrification project. Because that's the signal that this little old station is going to be reused now for electric train systems, including Caltrain and then high-speed rail in the future. Caltrain is one of the key to this dynamic corridor where the spine of Silicon Valley of San Francisco. We recently had a tour at Diridon Station in San Jose, where uh, already electrification infrastructure has been erected. Emission-free electric trains run under their own power when they can extend their roof arms, called pantographs, up to a system of charged overhead wires delivering electricity. The Caltrain electrification is the first electrification of a train system on the West Coast. Now the rest of the world is almost totally electric and they're way ahead of us in fighting climate change. We need to sh showcase the fact that you can electrify a whole mode of transportation and carrying 100,000 people, uh, it's projected to carry between 100 and 200,000 people, riders a day, uh, on instead of in cars, in an electrically powered, very fast and safe transit system. And that's what we're trying to do. The installation of overhead lines is complete at Caltrain's southern end, but continues north towards San Francisco. Five years into construction, most work goes on while existing diesel passenger trains use the very same tracks below. Operations are overseen from Caltrain offices in San Carlos. We're one of the first railroads that is converting diesel corridor into electrified. In fact, my research tells me this is 
one of the first ones to do that since World War II. So this is an incredible milestone for this area and for this agency, and I'm extremely happy to be part of that. Balfour Beatty is our design-build contractor, and they bring considerable amount of experience to this project. 115,000 volts of AC power from the grid arrive at traction power stations along the right-of-way. The current is then stepped down to 25,000 volts and sent out over the tracks. In fact, the last two weekends, we tested our overhead contact system and our traction power substation. So the system actually was energized and we had power flowing through our system. So this is a milestones that we have reached. Another milestone has been the building of the trains. The train is being designed and built by Stadler world-renowned manufacturer of vehicles. They actually opened up a manufacturing facility in Salt Lake City, Utah, and they have hired a considerable amount of uh, local talent. When assembled, the EMUs, electrical multiple units, are sent for testing on an energized route. From Utah to California or Bay Area, they're towed by UP's diesel locomotive to San Jose. We actually received pictures from throughout their travels. We had a lot of rail fans taking pictures and sending to us. Yeah, Caltrain's very lucky to have such a dedicated group of rail fans, um, not just locally, but across the country. A rail fan could be the youngest child who's so excited to see it's just a train go by to, you know, a grown adult who is enamored with all types of trains. And so they're really witnessing this transformational moment, not just for, you know, rail fans and rail history, but also for the state of California and our country as we transition to this cleaner technology. This is an opportunity to really move this corridor forward to this new technology. But, you know, our main focus is our sustainability. Caltrain electrification will significantly reduce the amount of diesel pollution out there. Uh, we'll reduce particulate matter, all sorts of air pollutants, as well as greenhouse gases. In addition, uh, it'll also help with communities of concern who um, are impacted by pollution to help everyone to breathe easier. Once delivered, the new train sets are pushed or pulled through painstaking clearance tests on their new home rails. The science is telling us that the most important way to fight climate change is to convert transportation and energy generation from petroleum-based to instead have them electrically powered and have the electricity created by the sun and wind and wave actions and geothermal. We're gonna do everything we could possibly do to focus the attention on the remedies. And Caltrain is the best example in the United States right now. Caltrain electrification has been a seven-year project, and we have two more years to go. It'll be fully electrified by 2024, which is very exciting. It's a multi-billion dollar project. When we think about our investment in public transportation, we really want to make sure that the investments we're making are those investments that have an outcome for the community that is really robust. So not only are we going to make our community healthier, we're going to make riding on Caltrain safer, we're going to be able to move more people, and we're going to be able to move people faster. Caltrain's been doing a lot of exciting events recently. We were really excited to bring the first electric train set to San Francisco's 4th and King Station to have a celebration event. I am very pleased to welcome you to the Caltrain San Francisco Terminal to mark the receipt of our first set of train cars for our new electrified railroad. 
project created 30,000 jobs across this country and 10,000 jobs alone to build these trains. Many of you know transportation sector accounts for roughly half of the state's greenhouse gas emissions. Caltrain can continue to become that backbone that literally takes millions upon millions of vehicle miles off the road every year. Our train system is leading the way. The fight against climate change will not be won with minor reforms and symbolic gestures, but with bold efforts like the one that we recognize today. Fantastic, glorious new trains. Uh, I think I was seen giving the train a big hug, but it's gonna be a great experience when we get into revenue service in 2024 for our riders. Thank you, Rotary International, for all you're doing to make our world a better place. Our children are gonna to come to us and they're gonna say, when you had a chance to reduce the impact of climate change on the future, did you do everything you could possibly do? Climate change caused by humans, it's advancing much faster than we thought, and that could be the end of humankind on this planet, mammals on this planet. I'm a grandfather. That's enough motivation for me to do all I can possibly do with the years I have left to fight climate change.